It's not official until that says. It says live video is starting. So I don't know if it's live. Now, now it's live. live. There we go. Now we're live. Yeah. Uh, well, we were alive before it started. But <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, I, 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 I was live. I was live when I was baptized. So. Okay. You were alive, thank God. When I was baptized, then I became alive. Yeah, I was going to say, you were dead in sin, and I was now dead. you became alive. There you go. I was blind, but now I see. see. Okay. Oh, here oh by the way, that's next Monday's lesson. Really? I was blind, but now I see. Okay. Because it's the blind beggar. Oh, gosh. So those of you that don't, you know, see us on Mondays, you need to come on Mondays, too, yeah. get, to get a fullness. Um, just want to explain, Pastor Dan is going to be stepping aside for a while because of his duties down in Gainesville. So um, you get Mo and Curly, and Larry has to <laughs> step aside. No, 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 no. Mo was gone. No, I'm Mo. I'm, no. I'm, I'm, I'm the lead. I'm the, no, I'm no. the lead stooge. <laughs> no, no. No, and, we know, and we know why you're Curly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So he's 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 Larry. He's that other stooge. Uh, so, so, so you have to you have to put up with the two of us. We're, we're going back to the the old days. Can we do this? I don't know. And we're going back to old technology. So I apologize right up front. We're already experiencing difficulties, but okay. Um, we'll we'll continue on and hope that everything works. And we'll have to listen to what the sound quality is like too. Yeah. We may look into buying some new equipment and setting it up here. Okay. You should pray for that. Pray for some new technology. Yeah. <laughs> put the request, just put the request out there. <laughs> well, I've got someone that I need to talk to, so there you go. Well, let's begin with a word of prayer and let's go. Okay. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to to get into your word to speak. Um, just that which you uh, bless us with, uh, your word. Uh, and as that word falls upon us, it's the Holy Spirit that, that moves us. So uh, grant that movement of the Holy Spirit today. Uh, grant us a rich abundance of an outpouring of him upon us. And, and so as we uh, get into your word, let it uh, unfold before us and prepare us for our worship on Sunday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys will have to let me. I'm gonna. I'm trying to control my voice. Um, so just let me know if I need to speak. Can a I do louder. what my mother used to do? To me? No. Oh. No. No pinching on your leg. No. You might. I got the nail. You might get. Left, you might get a left hand slap. <laughs> <laughs> we are starting with the gospel today. There, there are two that are assigned for this Sunday, just like last week. Uh, we are going to go with John 16. Um, it is John 16, 23 to the end of the chapter. This picks up from last Sunday. We, I did the alternate gospel last Sunday. Uh, John 16 was also one of the assigned ones, so we'll fill in some gaps there. But uh, we are John 16, 23 to the end of the chapter. Do you want to do this one or do you want me to Sure, do? I'll go ahead. In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have not asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed in me, and that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now we, you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. 
Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. And Jesus answered him, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming, and indeed is it come. It has come. When, <coughs> excuse me, you will be scattered, each to his own house, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Give it a little background here. Uh, go to the verses above that. Um, and, and in 16, 17, and 18, Jesus uses the phrase, a little while. A little while. A little while. Now for a little while. Um, and, and again, that sense of a little while is, you know, uh, Jesus knows what's about ready to happen. This is this is all discussion in the upper room. Right. Um, and, and so... Uh, last Sunday we had that great imagery at the end of that section when a woman is giving birth she has sorrow because her hour has come but when she has delivered the baby she no longer remembers the anguish so right. that, that that beautiful picture of the death and resurrection you know again the suffering the going through it, it right. and then the joy of the reward right right so so we get that beautiful and, and so we need to have that in the back of our mind getting into this because you know he, he's saying there's going to be death and resurrection and again he doesn't tell it to them plainly uh, <laughs> yeah the only thing i can see is, is, is the spirit actually opening their minds to what now we understand you're speaking plainly or his question is really <laughs> do you understand <laughs> come on that's what i was thinking the come same on. thing is they said, oh, yeah, we understand. And then Jesus going, no, you don't. No. <laughs> well, and, 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 and so so now we have, so so we, we go from a little while to then in that day. In that day. In that day. Now, now uh, again, when is in that day? Um, well, you, you, can, you can point to two, two specifics, I would say. Okay. After the resurrection. Okay. And after the return. Correct. Okay. Correct. It's because so which, which day, one is it? Right. <laughs> Both. <laughs> yes. Here we go again. Your yes, no questions. Um, yeah. It's interesting, you know. He's they have they have walked with him and they've asked him and communicated with him and he's taken care of them and now he's telling them, hey, that time has come to an end. Now you're going to go to the Father. Now you're going to go directly to the Father, right? You know, it's you, and it, and it's not like, and, I, and he said it plainly. You're going to ask the Father, or you're going to ask me, and I'm going to take it to the Father. No, you're going to ask the Father, which is the picture of the the curtain in the temple being being red. Yes, absolutely. Right, right. right. You're reading my notes down there. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, not well, <laughs> well and, 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 and again, I, I think that is so key uh, because, again, that that was strange for the Jew to hear because because there always had to be an inter intercessor. Right. So, somebody, right. Had to be the, somebody had to be the go-between. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus is really telling, and, and, and again, this becomes difficult because we read other, and I just preached a sermon about a month ago about Jesus being the intercessor because that was Monday, Thursday. Uh, okay. So, so don't let that contradict. Jesus is still the intercessor, but, but Jesus is saying you've got a direct path. You've got a direct path because you're going to ask in my name. Right. I'm the intercessor, but your path is direct. You don't, you don't bring it to me and I take it to the Father. You go straight to the Father. So, so if we pray in Jesus' name, we get everything we want. No, but on the video, <laughs> on the video, did you get the in Jesus' name? Oh yeah. I mean, that was. Well, that, and go ahead and explain it because okay. I, I think they did a great job of explaining what what truly in because how many people in the world today think oh because I said in Jesus', Jesus name, name that why am I not getting it right? But that's not what that means. It's not. not so at go all. ahead, Lisa. You got a question? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of confused by Christ's comment to them that. That they would go to the Father 
that they didn't go to the Father before. And y'all talking about the intercessor to the priest. But, but back in Old Testament days, they prayed to God. They had the high priest. They had the high priest. So when they were going back there, Daniel, mean, what was what was they the prayed, doing when they wrote their psalms and they were praying to God? They're praying to God, but their intercessor was the priest. They had to go through the priest for forgiveness of sins, for all the offerings and the tithes. That Here, they here's the key. Do you think about prayer differently? No. Here's the key. We, because of the fall of mankind, we were separated from the Father. We did not have a relationship with the Father. Jesus came to reconcile that relationship. So until... Jesus' death and resurrection, that relationship was still separated. So Jesus is acting on our behalf. That's why he was saying to the disciples, you, you've been asking me, you've been asking me. Because they didn't have the relationship with the Father. That had not been reconciled until death and resurrection. Okay. And, and, that, and that's why he's saying, now, now you don't need that go between because now the relationship with the father is reconciled you can speak directly to the father okay that makes a little bit more sense yeah. it's just without going through the high priest what they're praying for what they're asking for if their forgiveness of sins was through their offerings and givings and, and their tithes it was all was all work related all law related and now that law has has been replaced by the grace of God through the in his love through Christ so now we can go directly we don't need to go to uh, a priest and confess our sins and and do acts of worship so that our sins are forgiven it's complete it's done so our prayers our direct relationship with the father is now an open door because the relationship is restored reconciliation yep 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 okay yep. Bob so that means that that church just down the street from us, Metal Saints, they still believe that we need an innocent. Mm, they don't believe it's not. It's not really an intercessor per se, because they. Well, I'm sure I, 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 I old days in the neighborhood, and the people said yeah. they had to go to. It, it's more it's not intercessor so much as it is works no but but it is still intercessor because they pay pray to saint christopher they pray to mary well, they that's pray, true. Yeah. so in that so there there is that that feeling that there still still has to be somebody in between yeah, yeah. I, I, my neighbor used to say well i'm not going to mary they didn't say that i go to jesus i'm going to mary or St. Christopher for safe travels. Or, or, or what's the one that you bury in the ground upside down to sell Joseph. your house? St. <laughs> Joseph, I believe. Anyway, yeah. get, getting back, okay. In the name of Jesus, you know, I want a new car, Father. I need a new car. This old one is breaking and falling apart, and I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that's it, right? Sure. Okay. Now, go ahead and pray that one. It'll See be, what it'll happens. Give me nowhere. Right. <laughs> By praying in the name of Jesus, we are praying in the fact of number one, who Jesus is, His power, His authority, and most importantly—well, not most importantly, but last. Well, they all fit together. They're all fit together in His will. Okay. So if I'm praying in the will of God, by the power of God, and the authority, and, and knowing who Jesus is, He is our intercessor. He is our Savior. Okay. In all of, if I encompass all of that, what is my prayer going to be? Lord, my car is breaking down. Whatever Your will is, please help me. Okay? Not I want the red Cadillac over there on the lot. <laughs> well, and, and again, the sense the sense you have to remember here is because it comes up in this the priestly prayer is Father, you and I are one. 
so so again when we pray in the name of jesus it's it's really in the sense that you know the father and jesus are one right so when you pray in the name of jesus as you as you just said we're praying in the will of god yes um and i i like the way they explain too that in what was it in mark's gospel they said in mark's gospel Jesus sort of doesn't want to have anything to do with the people. <laughs> yeah. The way they explain it on the video is in Mark's gospel, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus basically says, I'm doing this because the Father wants me to do this, because the Father has sent me here. So he, he's, he's, he's in the will in, of the Father. In, in, in Mark's gospel, he's really living out the will of the Father. It's not necessarily Jesus' will, but he's just doing what his Father wants him to do. And, and, so, and, 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 and so, but but again, that, you know that that again is a perspective. That's why that's why you need all the gospels because that's a, that's a that's a great perspective. Because isn't that the way we should live our lives out? We should we should live every day, regardless of my will. I don't love you. Okay. I love you out of the Father's will, because the Father loves you. Okay. I'm sorry, Jack. <laughs> really? <laughs> Can't take me for what I am. Huh? <laughs> well, but, but isn't that the truth, though? I mean, is there not people in our lives that we say, God loves them, He loves me, I gotta just take them for who they are? Bless your heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, where's Pastor Dan when I? <laughs> But 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 again, you know, uh, Jesus knows this. This is what will be, but it's not there yet, because again, we know the distinguishing mark is death and resurrection. Right. Um. So that's why he says, "In that day, in that day," and and especially, and we'll we'll see the vision in in Revelation. In that day is also when he returns. Mm -hmm. Because then the fullness of that doing God's will, living in God's will, uh, will take place. But uh, what a what a great promise He gives us here. Yeah. In me, you have you you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. Yeah. Now I don't know that last statement, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Right. Now I did a little research on that. Overcome the world. Okay. From the video or, or your own? I think the video got me started on okay. it, and then I went from there. Okay. Okay. Because the video made a point of saying that, you know, it's he he has overcome the world, but it's active, present, and future. Okay. Whenever you have that that have tense, it's I have done it, and it continues to and be it done. It continues, to, and it will be done in, to the end. Right. You know, I have. In other words, he has. Through the, through the death and resurrection, overcome the world. He continues today to overcome the world. And when will that end? When he returns. When he overcomes the world. When he overcomes the world. It's a it's a continuation. It's not I have overcome the world by my death and resurrection or my birth. It's it's a continuing working through. So it's it that was a neat, you know, just. It, it, it just it, it explained to me like in a, in a way of the tribulation that we go through yes if he if he had overcome the world and it's done why would we have tribulation but we have tribulation because he continues his work it's not done yet he is continuing to do mm -hmm. his work so we're going to have that tribulation we're going to have that aggravation and, and 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 sometimes even doubts but we have to know and just trust that hey he's overcome and continues to be an overcoming and, and one last point for me is verse 28 i came from the father and have come into the world and now i'm leaving the world and going to the father <clears throat> and again i have come into the world he he became one of us but then he goes back to the Father to sit at the right hand. And, and to me, you know, and, and this came out of a commentary that I read, it led me to this thought is, 
he basically has consummated the relationship. Mm -hmm. But then go one further, and, and I think Revelation has that imagery that we're going to read, or it was last week. It was last week's, I think. No, it's, it's in this week's. Typically, when you think of consummating a relationship, what relationship do you think of? It's, yeah, Christ and His bride, the church. Right. So, so, so think. So, and that, and I, when I when I saw that, I'm going, oh, what a, what a perfect imagery, you know. I, I, you know, he, he came to us to be one of us, but now he goes back to the Father. He consummates the relationship, our relationship with the Father. It's it's Christ and His bride, the Church, and, and again, he he consummated it in death and resurrection, but he will fully consummate it right. on the last day. At, in that day. Now, did you pick up on the on the on the words of hope that we have? I'm, I'm kind Which of, one? Well, get specific here. Get specific. You, asking you will receive that your joy may be full. No, no. Okay. Um, Do you now believe? Oh. I don't know if you know where I'm going with this, <laughs> but do you now believe? Okay. You're. What's going to happen? It explains in the verse, you know, you're going to leave me, you're going to run away. And a few weeks ago, uh, I'm going fishing. Right. You know, he's, he's there. This is, and I'm going fishing was even after his visitation with them. You know, this is, an, so what happens? To me, that's, that's hope. Because here are the disciples who had this relationship, who knew who Jesus was, who, who now say, and and they're going to run from him, and, and they're and he still keeps coming back. To me, to me, the hopefulness is the the faith relationship isn't dependent upon me. That's the point. Exactly the point. It's not me. It's what Christ does for me. And in so, me. so why not believe in infant baptism? I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> Dan would have. <laughs> you got anything else? Uh, yeah, we're going to move to the psalm. <laughs> okay. By the way, this is my sermon text for Sunday. We've done this one before because I had all my scribbles in it, but I've added some new scribbles to it. I saw that we had done it before, and I see it's going to be coming up again. Oh, is it? Yeah. I hate when they do that. Is it coming up again real soon? Uh, no, I think it's... I can't remember one. Okay. Down the road. Psalm 67, uh, to the choir master, with stringed instruments. A psalm. A psalm. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us. Selah. That your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Selah. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Sort of like uh, a couple of our songs last Sunday where you get this refrain this repeated refrain right. no, notice verses 3 and 5 so again yeah. that's why it says a psalm a song it, obviously it was something that they that they sang in worship and, and you and you can imagine you know that you know maybe there was a cantor that was that did verses 1 and 2 and then the whole yeah. congregation did right. 3 and then the cantor would do 4 and the whole congregation does 5 so yeah you get this and and, and it's about blessing it absolutely is. You, you, you can't right. miss that. It, and I'm wondering in verse 1, is that a benediction, an ending, or is it a beginning for each day? That's the start of my sermon on Sunday. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> right, right. I mean, do you hear the, not ironic, but ironic blessing? May God. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Yes, you should. You should hear that when when you get when you, when you right. It, it, it's the, it's the yeah. benediction we have. So yes, is is it the 
it, ending or is it the beginning? You know, it's but it's 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 all about what God does. It's not what we're doing here. It's what what God does for us. Right? Be gracious, and bless us, and make His face shine upon us. Oh, oh, what, what's the revelation? He's the he. It, it's it's not dark. It's because. Because God's there, and, and right, you don't need a sun or a moon. You don't need a sun, right? Right, right. Because, well, yeah. And 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 again, we're, you know, <clears throat> I'm really focused on blessing, and you and I were having a slight discussion before we got started. Is you know, and I'm, I'm and, and it fits, it ties in nicely with that gospel. That's why I wanted to do mm -hmm. the gospel first because it's about prayer. It is. You know, because the gospel was about prayer. Now we get to go directly to yeah. God with our with the prayer. and 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 when we typically think about blessing, you know, God bless us. You know, we typically go to Him in prayer for our blessings. Um, what what tend what tends to be the things we ask for? Yeah, I know, I know where we're going. Oh, that's right. You, you said the red Cadillac. The red Cadillac. <laughs> and I do not like red Cadillacs. <laughs> what? Orange pickup orange, orange pick yeah. trucks. Got, thank you, Lord. I got my orange pickup. <laughs> but, oh. and, and, but yeah. And, 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 and that's really where the... But that's how our whole focus is, is what we think we want. And you spent a whole couple minutes saying that we're praying in the name of Jesus and what does that mean and and, and the so so the the key here is what is the blessing that is being spoken of here we're going to see it in the acts we passage will. coming up uh, and 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 it's one that Lisa you you asked me a few weeks ago about when are we going to go back to uh, praying for the ones that were concerned about their faith relationship. To me, I think this is what is at the heart of this, is the blessing is not the tangible things of this world, although, yeah, that's good and fine. What, it, what is the true blessing that God has given to us? Forgiveness of sins. His relationship. By grace have you been saved faith. through faith. Yeah, you know, I work. And 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 how how and 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 I I think I, if I recall right, uh, my my move into the law is we take it for granted. Well, right, we take it for granted because what what are we, what are we praying for? We're praying for things. We're praying for stuff. We're praying for you know. Uh, I I got a boo boo. Um, well, we take it for granted like tomorrow's going to come. I make all these plans. Oh, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll get it done. This is this is my agenda. This is we just take for granted the sun's going to rise. That when I get out of bed, my feet are going to hit the floor. Do we take our faith for granted? Yes, we do. And and and, and <clears throat> I'm still I'm still wrestling with this, so I'm I'm going to throw it out here. Uh, this might be in the sermon, this might not. Right now it's, it's in the sermon. Is, uh, because it really, it really hinges on verse 4. Because as we have... Do we pray for all the nations? I, I, I've participated in the National Day Prayer Service for a number of years. And, and, and who do we tend to pray for? Just America. Just, Just America. Well, that's the point. Of the and, 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 and really, we have, we have been blessed with faith. Have we underappreciated this blessing? That we are not praying for the faith of other people. Okay, well. That we're not praying for the faith of the, of the nations. And, 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 and what I'm, what I'm going to bring to is that God gives us right justice just equity and merciful goodness. But this kind of goes along with the study that I was doing in, in comparison of these different verses. Verse 2, that, you're, that you're, 
your way may be known on earth mm -hmm. to all nations mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. in the next verse and in the verses following where it says let the peoples praise you that's the specific tribe or the nation of Israel right so it's a separation of Israel in the whole world and that whole psalm follows that what, what you what you're going with are we praying for America or are we praying for all nations right are we you know America being our tribe well and and take a look at what happened this weekend you know with what happened in Buffalo and and what has happened over the last with racial injustice and all this stuff mm -hmm. folks we're on the wrong path you know we're, we're 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 trying to look at worldly ways of taking care of this and that's why i'm 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 speaking you know god is the one who gives right justice just equity and merciful goodness if if we you know again if we want things to be and 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 our country is crying out we want things to be equal are we going to find equality in government no not, not even close yeah. are we going to find equality in in church no where does equality get found it's with the lord only and and and, yeah. and he and, determines what equality is and and it doesn't look like the way we think it looks like for you judge the peoples with equity. His equity. His equity. His definition of equity, not ours. You know. You know. Yeah. So yeah, that, that this this one is really causing me to wrestle a bit it's because be, be, because again, I, I I think I think we really look at our prayers, we look at our blessings, and we underappreciate because we just go so earthly worldly with it instead of going we got a big god if, if, if he takes care of all the nations with their faith is that going to solve a whole bunch of stuff if he t if he does it yeah but not us you know and the point being you know he judges the people with equity what is that equity through christ or without christ and we got his riches yeah that's, that, fair. that's equal that sounds fair yeah that's that's god's equity yeah yeah and and, and he and does so, it all and so you get down to verse six the earth has yielded its increase god our god shall bless us there you are on the cross didn't make any with, sense with, with god with god how do things come out in just bits and pieces and dribbles and grabs or does it come out abundantly it's always abundantly but we don't see it we just take everything for granted and overlook it all. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. So. That's what that, you're preaching on. That's what I'm preaching on. So. Okay. So, so you might have, are you doing sound on Sunday? Yes. You might have to do one of these. <laughs> or one of those. Because, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm probably going to get fired up on that one. So. You got anything else on that? I need a red light behind me so I can start flashing it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. All right. No. So we're moving on to Acts chapter 16. Yes. Uh, Acts 16 verses 9 through 15. I find it interesting where they start this. In the middle. I know. Yeah. Will, will, will you start at six when you read this? Start oh at six goodness! Here we go. Uh, well, I'll I'll read it then. All right, you read. The, I'll I'll, uh, I'll read the whole thing. No, I got it. I got it. Here Be, go. Because I, I think it's important to to know why they went to Macedonia. Yeah, I read it. I had it, you know, and I'm thinking, I'm glad we don't have that because I don't know if I can. Oh, pronounce all the, all the names. Well, I'll give it a shot. Okay, starting at verse six. Hey, you know, you know what the secret is? Hmm. You just just go through those right through them, and people won't people won't know. It's yeah. It's when you stumble uh -huh. and and you pause, then they go, oh, they goof something up. Well, I mean, the, the title of the whole group is the Mac Macedonian Call. So right. Why do they start anyway? Well. I know. I, I like the flavor of those first few verses because it was like, you know, God was really in control. Here again, here again is well, what I just point, right? here, here again is what I was just saying is 
we underappreciate what blessing is because blessing is not these earthly things. Blessing is what God does to move people in faith. And, and, and why did he not? All right, well, we'll go ahead, read. And they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been for having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak to the word, speak of the word in Asia. And when they had come to Mysia, they attempted to go through into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, Mysia, Mysia all right, they went in down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there urging them and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and, fr and from there to Philippi, which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia, a Roman colony remained in this city. We remained in this city some days. And on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate of the to the riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. We sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia, from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. And the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. And after she was baptized, and her household as well, and she was urged to say, of saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. Good job. <laughs> and I was going to say, whoever's reading, I hope they practice it. <laughs> they don't have the, they don't have the really Mysia and Bithynia and Phrygia, yeah. but they do have some other good ones in there. Um, All right, so before we get started, go ahead, hit verse 15. What about verse 15? Well, she was baptized. Yeah. In her household. Right. Yeah. Well, I wasn't going to go there because okay. Dan is pre Dan is preaching on this because he's preaching Acts through the se season of Easter, and, and I gave him a sermon title. Oh yeah, and, and he caught it right away. And this is an old song. This is this is a song probably from the fifties. Uh -huh. uh, Patty Page. Okay, That's come right. on to my house, to my oh, house. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as I read what Lydia said. If you judge me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house, come and, to stay. My house and stay. Yeah. Yeah. But yet, and, and the commentaries did say that household probably included children. Oh yeah, there's, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. I mean, so but, yes, another another plug in for yeah. infant baptism or mm -hmm. baptism before you can uh, really make an understandable statement of faith. Right. But all right. So going back to the previous verses we read. Where is God's will? All right. It, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't really Galatia, Galatia, all right? <laughs> you know, they had a plan. They they probably planned out their route. Right. You know, according to the coast of you know, and, and traveling around, right. taking in in all earnestness and faithfulness, sharing the word of God as they were told to go. But not there. Not there. Not there. Over here. We're going to send you over here. I'm going to send you over here. Don't. And then. Well, and, and, and the thing was, it, it wasn't that the Lord directed them there. It was the Spirit forbid them there. Yeah. And so they had to. Uh, th that, had that, to is, that is so cool is the Spirit said, no, not there. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't. OK. Yes. Let, let's go this way. No, no, not there. Not there. Not there. And then. And finally, what? A vision. To Paul in the night. Now, this is interesting. A man of Macedonia right, was standing there. Hmm. True. Okay? A man. True. Because when, when he gets to Macedonia, who does he meet with? Lydia. <laughs> yeah. No, not just Lydia, but, but the women. gathering were all women. We're there were no, and, and no men. One, one of the commentaries said that there were probably very few men 
and there probably wasn't a synagogue there. That's why they're meeting down in the water. Yeah, that's because it was, you know, it was a Roman district. Right. Okay. Right. A Roman colony. So why would they have a synagogue? Why would they have a Lutheran church in Blairsville, Georgia? Makes no sense, but it sure works, doesn't it? Something about the Holy Spirit, you think? Outside the city limits, we got a church. Okay, so outside. So they go outside the wall. <laughs> and they go down and they and they find it, you know. Uh, Catch your breath. Did you have a clone back? No, I didn't. <laughs> no, but that was a great statement. You know, come on. All right, so here, here they are, you know, and, and they're meeting with who? With women. Right. You know, so they're, they're outside. Okay. Did that strike you? It did, but I can't remember the outside, point that outside, I wanted to make. Uh, they went outside, outside the gate. Well, I, I was I was thinking of the crucifixion. Where they took yes, yes, they took them outside. Right, right. Uh, outside the city wall. Uh, again, the the place where. Um, Must yeah. Or the stoning. They took him outside to stone him, but he walked right back through them. I mean, always outside. Right. It, it, it's the it's the place where you don't typically think of finding the holy things. Right. Yeah. And again, the emphasis on a group of women. Yeah. Women, Gentiles, Paul, how dare you? You know. But they. She was a worshiper of God. She was a God fear. Well, well, that's what it says. Yep. Who was a worshiper of God? And and what happens here? The Lord opens her heart to listen to Paul. You right. Know? So, kind of tells me that yes, I can be a worshiper of God, but I may not always get all the messages unless the Spirit works through those who are speaking to open. Well. Our prayer on Sunday morning when I pray with you. Mm-hmm. All right. You know, fill us with the Holy Spirit and not let only your word be spoken through, Pastor, but let it be heard by all those in the church. Right. Basically is, I mean, correct. So it's, it's the Holy Spirit's working. That's, and that's what happens here. Well, and that's why, that's why preparing, preparing a sermon is so difficult because you got to make sure that Yes, p- part of it is your your knowledge. Part of it is your study, uh, putting words together. Part of it is a human aspect. But but you've got to you've got to get yourself to a place of don't let this be driven by me, right? By my agenda, by my words, by my cute, by my saying a cute phrase. You know, um, you'd never do that. Dude. Well. <laughs> Alliteration is real easy to remember. Yeah. I'll tell you, there are some, there are certain tricks you play uh, to mean, help remember. It's just, it's hard for me to, because we do these Bible studies, mm-hmm. and because I have prepared sermons in my life. and you will be and prepared when coming up. Well, I've already started. Good. Um, I can't, I can't fathom someone who who goes up on a Sunday morning and opens the Bible. And reads a text and just preaches that text. Well, without, Jesus did. What I understand. <laughs> yeah, Jesus can do that. But 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 wait a minute now. He was the word. He knew the word. <laughs> he lived the word. He spoke the word. It was all him. Okay. So without right. preparation, without prior work, and and I mean, I, I that's to me. It's two, it says two things. I can't do it, right? But the one who can is really relying on the Lord to give them that message. Maybe, you know. Maybe. So, you know, I mean, or or maybe they're so full of themselves that, yeah. you know. And and again, we realize the. And you said it earlier. The only way this message is effective is because of the Holy Spirit, right? And, and it's got to be the Holy Spirit, whether it's through preparation, 
or, or the spontaneous thoughts. It's, it's got to be the Holy Spirit. Right. It has to be. Right. Because without the Holy Spirit, the, we, we cannot understand. Well, I shouldn't say that we can't do the will of God because obviously the will of God was done through the high priest. True. Through Pharaoh. True. I mean, God's will will be done. But in, in their ignorance, sometimes in our ignorance. So <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I mean, there have been some Sundays where I've said something and I'm going, oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> where did that come from? <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh. Well, it's like, that's the phrase I'm working with right now in that psalm is, you know, he, uh, God, God gives right justice, just equity, and merciful goodness. You know, it's like, and, and that's why I'm struggling with it. I, I, I want to make sure that it is true and right. And, and I think I've got my head around it now that, you know, right justice, and especially the first two part, right justice and just uh, equity, especially just e equity. Just, yes. it, it's, it's the sense of it's not what we consider equity. It's not what we consider justice. It's it's, it's God's equity, God's justice, and, and his alone, not as even. And can we really perceive or understand that? Hmm? I mean, what do when, we, when we get a glimpse like this, we do. Him coming to Lydia. I mean, when 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 we get a glimpse like, then we go, oh, that's what that is. You know, it doesn't make sense. And it kind of ties in with the with the with the other text where all all people, God loves all people. You know, and. He opens. Well, we'll get into it a little, a little bit in Revelation. I'll show you my tie in there. Okay. When we get to Revelation. So. Oh, but, did you catch the other thing? Uh, and and this is an interesting move. Uh, and the, another reason why I wanted you to read the the earlier verses is, and they went through the region of Phrygia, and when they had come to Mysia, it's and, all that. And and then verse verse uh, ten. Immediately, we sought to go into. Yeah. Do you, do you know why it's, that? It's, it's a unity. It's it's. Do you know Do you know why it changes from they to we? It's it's significant. Luke is now joining the team. Ah, uh, no, I didn't know. Luke, Luke didn't is think. Luke is now joining the team. Oh, okay. And that's why it changes from they to we and us because now Luke Luke He's is part part of, part of the group that is going so he can speak firsthand of what's right not what's not what's been told but right and and Lydia um, she she was probably well to do she had to be uh, you know if, if she dealt in purple goods she had to be well to do and so she probably when you know when they moved on when Paul moved on from here she probably financed that church Kept yeah, and, and, and the fact that she's in a Roman colony, she's allowed to be well-to-do. Mm -hmm. She's not suppressed by Jewish traditions and customs. Right, right. So. But again, the neat thing, and this happens many times in Acts, is the connection of the Holy Spirit with baptism. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. And that really develops our understanding of, of, of baptism. Yes. Is, is the connection you know because you have some church bodies that um, there's a there's the water baptism and then there's the baptism of the Holy Spirit right that they are two they separate separated. things uh, but no. we say no uh, they're, they're connected baptized, there's a unity yep okay do you have anything else um no okay I think I'm good there's probably other things in there but we're actually going to Believe. do a Revelation text. Yeah, we got 10 minutes. Okay. So uh, we are in Revelation 21, where we were last week. Moving a little further. And again, here's some separation. They drop out some verses. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see where you, you connected this. I know where I connected. Um, but uh, Revelation 21, starting at verse 9. Then came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues and spoke to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. 
And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east, three gates, on the north, three gates, on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Skipping down to twenty-one. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, each of the gates made of a single pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, transparent as glass. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. By its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. And its gates will never be shut by day, and there will, will be no night there. They will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So when is the gates going to be closed? They aren't. They aren't, right? Gates will never be shut by day. And there's no night, so it's always day. So why, why gates? Okay. <laughs> I'll go there. Why do, you, why do you need gates if they're never going to be closed? I'll, I'll go there. Okay. Thinking back to the nation of Israel, and it says here, the great high wall with twelve gates, and the gates with the twelve angels, and on the gates were the names of the tribes of the son of Israel. What was the original intention that God gave the nation of Israel? They were to be his people that were mm -hmm. to go out mm -hmm. and be examples to all the world and to be unique to all the world that all the world would want to come and follow them <laughs> because they're blessed with God walking with them mm -hmm. and of course they fell short in that they always, as we always do so I like what you said there they were blessed with God walking with them they they, they, they they had other blessings too but, but what what made them blessed the biggest thing is that God was with them God was with them thank you for preaching my sermon okay <laughs> <laughs> no not this week I, not till June <laughs> alright so God's with them he, he, you know and they're to be an example and and, and to go out and do all these things and so now the significance of them is, is that they are the gates and they are to always be open as they were to always be examples and, okay all right okay that's where I see that comparison okay well and and the the work that I did the the things that I read emphasized that we had the imagery of the walls and the gates that they were protective back in the Old Testament time. They, 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 were, they were symbolic of God's protection. Right. Now the gates are symbolic of God's embrace. Embrace. Because they don't need protection anymore. Because we, we, we hear that at the end with, you know, there will be nothing unclean and right. anyone... Uh, they're no detestable or false. They don't need to be protected. Now they're just embraced. No, we can. And that's why I said I loved what you said is the sense of He's with them. Right. He's there. So He's, you get you get God's arms hugging them. Right. That that to me is the gates. The gates would be the arms of God right. hugging them. Right. You know, and of course then you got the, the foundations, which foundation of the church. Right. On this, I will. On this rock, I will build this church. All right. The it's confession not, and the teachings. It, it's not Paul. It's just it's the confessions and the teachings of, right. of, of, of what was said. You know. 
So you 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 have that. Um, I just thought that was really. I got to go back to the first, the first, the first nine. This this I had a hard time with. Okay. Then came the seven, the, uh, one of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues. Okay. Mm-hmm. The angel who was dealing out the plagues is now showing God's mercy right so you've got punishment and mercy God's God's love God is a God of wrath God is a God of love yeah and and you've got both of them and I mean I don't know if I would have trusted that angel (laughs) After seeing all that with with all the wrath that came upon the earth, you know, I mean, all the plagues. You know, go back to the gospel. Okay. Now, do you now believe? Do you now believe? Again, it's it's not. Do you get it here? But do you trust? Do you trust God? Yeah. Do you trust that angel? I have to, because that is an obedient messenger of God. Period. He's going to do what he's told to do, when he's told to do it, and how he's told to do it. And is he told to pour out the the uh, plagues upon these people? There you go. Not he, these people. Not but, these people. No. You know, no. Now he's going to take me and, and show me as he, you know, that that salvation, that that love, that mercy that God has. I, interesting thing. Uh, did you did you do anything with the pearl? No, I did not. Because it. I tried not to get out into the weeds. Yeah, the I, I, I know, because yeah. you tend to. Because uh, <laughs> that's why I was surprised you didn't... No. The pearl is never mentioned in the Old Testament. Okay. It there And, and the, the commentator said, uh, I, I think the only other time that pearl is mentioned is the pearl of great price. Where, where they sold all... You know, it's the, it's the three parables. The one where he finds the treasure in the and in the, the field, and and and, 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 and the things right. Back and buy but the then, field. but then the second one is the pearl of great price. Okay. So pearl, pearl was not a widely known, but it was very valued. So so when you get this, twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each of the gates made of a single pearl in the street. We're 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 being informed of the value. And again, this goes this goes back to what I said about blessing. Blessing is underappreciated because we tend to go to earthly. Revelation reminds us: don't go earthly. No. Go heavenly. You know, it, it's 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 it's. I mentioned it last week or the week before. It's you know when 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 people go, you know, I can't wait to get to heaven and see so and so again. No, I can't wait to get to heaven because I get to see Jesus. I, I know. I know. I'm gonna. I will. I hope that I will see my mother and father. Not that I doubt that they're in heaven. But I do hope to see them. But that's not the point of me being in heaven. Right. That's not my agenda. Right. It's it's not. But it won't even make a difference because you're gonna see Jesus. You know That's the point. That, that's the blessing. That's the blessing. And, and and again, he reminds us what the blessing is. There is no need for a temple. Because the temple was what? The temple was indicative of the presence of God. The presence of God. <laughs> God's there. You don't need a temple. No. And, and do you need a light? No, you don't need a sun or a moon because the glory of God is lighting up the place. Yeah. You know, that's the blessing. The blessing is because of our faith, we live in the presence of God. So, And, and, and again, it's I, I love those moments, uh, you know, you you've had the opportunity to serve communion when you you get those moments where where somebody in, in the moment you can tell it means you know it, was it, the, it, it doesn't happen all the time with no, everybody. But it's a very humble thing but, when but, you see that but but when you when you get to oh. see somebody who's who's maybe struggling with something and, and 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 in the moment of receiving the body and blood of Jesus you, you can tell it, it it's impactful yeah to me, that was the most unworthy moment in my life. To be humbled, you know, to see somebody humbling, and, right. and, and, and it was like, right. you know, it's 
and, 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 it's and, different. And it's oh, how, oh, how it would be if we all would have that moment every time we come in. Mm. Yeah. Because that's that's what this verse is. That's what this verse is, is going to the Lord's table, holding Jesus, tasting Jesus, smelling Jesus, and just letting that just wash over us. That's blessing. That's blessing. Uh, and, and that's why I say, I think too often, blessing is underappreciated. We just... We take things for granted. If she's keeping count, we, we're probably at five or six today. <laughs> well, I haven't even had spoke my sermon yet. How'd she know? <laughs> you got anything else? I am good. Anybody else got anything? Questions? Why don't you close us with prayer? Father, we thank you for this time together, our fellowship here in person, and with those who, will, who are now or will be watching this on Facebook. Lord, continue, we ask you to bless this ministry, that your will be done here, and just give us the peace and joy and grace that only you can provide. We give you all this praise and thanks in Christ's name. Amen. Let us go and serve the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Song title is Best.